Hello, a good day to you all. We will be presenting on yogurt production today. Let me introduce my teammate, Devi Bagudarakji, Abhilashini, I am Sandeep, and I am Dilma. In this presentation, we are hoping to talk about key life cycle stages of this product and the stakeholders involved. Manufacturing process with all inputs and outputs. The functional unit for comparing sustainability with similar products. Inputs and outputs during the product use stage and end of life stage. This is introduction. Let's move on to first task. Task 1 is identify key life stages in yogurt production. In brief, these are the key life stages of yogurt production. There are 13 key life stages in yogurt production. Let me talk about one by one. This key stage not included in manufacturing process. Because of that, we consider that this is a out of boundary. Uh, first manufacturing key stage is adjust milk composition and blend integration. Uh, this is the stage mainly talk about uh, modifi modifying milk properties and mixing additives or flavoring to meet desired quality taste and requirement for yogurt production. Milk pasteurization, heat treatment process to eliminate harmful pathogens in milk, ensuring safety while preserving quality. Factory workers and engineers are main stakeholders in this stage. The time required typically range from 15 to 30 seconds. Homogenization, mechanical process that break down fat to obvious in milk to create uniform distribution, preventing cream separating and ensuring consistent texture in dairy products like yogurt. Factory workers and engineers are main stakeholders in this stage. Uh, the time required. Uh, typically few minutes pouring milk rapidly reducing the temperature of milk after processing step like pasteurization or homogenization prevent bacterial growth and maintain product quality factory workers and engineers are main stakeholders in this stage time the time required uh, to typically 10 to 30 minutes fermentation a biological process that alters the flavor texture and preservation of milk converting it is carb its carbohydrate into, into acidic alcohol for the action of microbes like yeast or bacteria. Fermentation you use yogurt, its distinctive flavor and texture during manufacture. Quality control team are main stakeholders in this stage. The time required typically 4 to 12 hours. Incubation milk is fermented by yogurt, micronesium in the controller. Atmosphere. This process thickens the milk and creates the texture and flavor of yogurt by converting lactose into lactic acid. Factory workers and engineers are main stakeholders in this stage. The time required to typically 4 to 8 hours. Monitoring the fermentation. In this stage, mainly monitor pH, acidity, and other parameters. Workers and quality control teams are main stakeholders in this stage. The time required. Typically, 1 to 2 hours. Pulling flavor and flavor addition. After fermentation, the yogurt must be quickly pulled to stop bacterial growth before flavoring or additing sugars to improve texture and taste. Factory workers and engineers are main stakeholders in this stage. Time, the time required typically 15 to 30 minutes. Quality control and testing. Before packing and distribution, yogurt samples are rigorously evaluated for flavor, consistency, acidity and other qualities to make sure they fulfill quality standard. Lab te technician test eaters are main stakeholders in this stage. The time required typically few hours. Packaging and storage. Procedure of packing yogurt into containers, sealing them and keeping the finished product in the controlled environment until distribution and consumption in order to maintain freshness, quality and safety. Factory workers and operators are main stakeholders in this stage. Hi. I am Mahendra Sandeep. I will be explaining about the manufacturing process of yogurt production. Collecting the milk from farms and transporting them to the factories is the first step of yogurt production. Energy sources used here are non-renewable. To increase the quality and the taste of the yogurt product, adjust milk composition and blend ingredients will be done as a second step of yogurt production. Energy sources used here are non-renewable, such as electricity and natural gases. AI emission will be happened as output in this process. Milk pasteurization is the third step of yogurt production. Energy sources used here are non-renewable. Except the energy sources, water will be used in this process. AI emission will be happened as output in this process. 
as the first step of yogurt production, homogenization was done. Energy sources used here are non renewable such as electricity. Greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide will be released in this process. To maintain the quality of the yogurt product, cooling the milk will be done as the fifth step of yogurt production. The energy sources used here are non renewable. Heat from the machine and air emission will be happened as output of this process. To ensure the safety of the yogurt product, fermentation will be done after cooling the milk. Energy sources used here are non renewable. Except the energy sources, water will be used in this process. Greenhouse gases will be released as output in this process. Incubation is the seventh step of yogurt production. Energy sources used here are non renewable, such as electricity and LP gas. Greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide will be released in this process. Monitoring the fermentation is the eighth step of yogurt production and it's the quality inspection process. Energy sources used in this step are non renewable, such as electricity and LP gas. Greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide will be released in this process. Cooling and adding flavor will be done after monitoring the fermentation. Energy sources used here are non renewable. Greenhouse gases will be released as output in this process. Quality control and testing is the 10th step of yogurt production and it's also a quality inspections process. Energy sources used here are non renewable. AI emission and chemicals will be released as output in this process. Finally, packing, storage, Transport and users will be done respectively in the yogurt production process. Energy sources used in these steps are non renewable. Greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide will be released in this process. So, in the flowchart of yogurt pro production process, first step collecting the milk and transportation, last step transportation and users are out of system boundaries and the other steps of yogurt production are in system boundaries. So that's the end of the yogurt manufacturing process. Thank you. I am Dhami Pavadarachi and I will be explaining the task 3. So the task 3 will be a functional unit for comparing sustainability with similar products. Yogurt is comparatively a food which contributes less, I mean less weight to the carbon footprint. But we should consider producing yogurt more sustainably. Reducing the environmental footprint of yogurt production is of utmost importance from cleaner production and sustainability point of view. So yogurt can contribute to sustainability in a few ways. Choosing yogurt made from organic ingredients, supporting local dairy farmers, using eco-friendly packaging can be of few. So what is a functional unit? So in, in, day, in, in our day-to-day -day life, for quantifiable measurements, we use standard units. For example, if we want to measure a mass a weight, we use kilograms or newtons. So in that way, to get a quantifiable measurement, we need a functional unit. So here, the functional unit is also something similar to that. When comparing sustainability in different products, it's essential to create a basis for comparison, a, a unit which serves as the reference point for, me, for a meaningful comparison. So, the functional unit allows a standardized comparison of environmental and social impacts associated. So, there are a few factors that should be considered when comparing using the functional unit. So, let me mention some of them. Consumption of energy, analyzing greenhouse gas emissions such as carbon dioxide, uh, waste generation, transportation impacts, packaging impacts, a few of them. So we have taken few functional units uh, out of a lot. So as the option one, uh, one cup of yogurt is given as a functional unit, uh, as one option. And for option two, we gave one liter of yogurt. Option three is one ton of yogurt. And option four is one kilogram of yogurt. And option five is one cubic meter of yogurt. So from the options that we took for comparison, 
we felt that these two options are better to compare. So uh, it was option one and option two. So from those two options, we preferred the option one uh, more. And let me tell you why. So there are a few reasons for selecting option one and few are. The functional unit of one kilogram of yogurt is often considered better than one cup of yogurt. It provides a standardized measure of comparison, as I mentioned before. It is quantifiable, quantifiable more than uh, one cup of yogurt. Uh, so there are a few main points where we took this as the option. Uh, first one was consistency. Using a consistent unit like kilogram helps in maintaining the consistency because it does not change over different contexts. For each and every country, we have one base, like one basic unit uh, core kilogram, so it is easy to measure throughout. And the second one is precision. Uh, so from brand to brand, from country to country, the size of the cup can differ, but one kilogram is a more precise measurement. So. The last one is international standards. Weight measurements are more consistently globally facilitating communication across regions. So the last one will be avoiding volume areas. Volume measurements like cups can lead to errors due to the variations in ingredients, density and packing. The last task we are going to discuss about is based on the use stage and end life stage of yogurt. The table indicates the inputs and outputs of the last few stages of yogurt consumption. Once the desired quality of yogurt has been manufactured, the packaging of yogurt is done. A specified amount of yogurt is transferred to quantity of yogurt cups using it's usually made up of plastic cups and all these are packed together using a big cardboard box. Utensils such as spoons are also included, which would be mostly made up of plastics. Labeling of the yogurt uses machines that would require energy for the machines to function. In this case, non-renewable energy resources are used. Therefore, cardboard, plastic, uh, plastics and energy are inputted in this packaging stage. As output, Solids such as the plastics and cardboards, which is not in use, which wasn't in use, are thrown away as waste. There could be release of toxic gases by burning of fossil fuels to generate electricity for the labeling and labeling and pack packing machines. So these are the few pictures of the machines used in factories for the purpose of labeling and packing the yogurts. The next stage the packed yogurt would go through is the storage or refrigeration to preserve the good quality of them. So non-renewable energy resources are inputted in this case for the cooling machines in the factories. So this image is the uh, cooling machines that are used in the factories for yogurt production. As output of this stage through the machines, toxic gases are again released such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide and so on. Next, when the time passes, these prepared yogurt is transported and distributed to supermarkets and groceries for the consumers to purchase it. Fuel is required in this case for vehicles in uh, vehicles. So because of this, greenhouse gas is emitted to the vehicles and this increases in global warming of our planet Earth. At the end, yogurt is obtained by us the consumers. After eating the yogurt, the finished yogurt cups, spoons are disposed into the environment as output of the end life stage. It is the end of our presentation. To conclude with this life cycle of yogurt production, 
Adopting this sustainable practice is not just a responsibility as the next future engineers, but it is one of our golden opportunity to be a really big part in conserving back our planet Earth. Understanding the environment, social and economic impacts of, for an example, this yogurt production and maintaining a sustainable way of producing it can surely create a better future. Because as mentioned by Cameron Sinclair, when sustainability is viewed as being a matter of survival for your business, I believe you can create a massive change. Thank you.